No, we're not in Tokyo yet. We're in my hometown, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Here, Japan's influence is all around us. Sao Paulo is home to 23 million people and more than 1 million of them are of Japanese descent, which makes of it the largest Japanese community outside of Japan. The Japanese have been coming here for over a century. They've helped us to build Brazil alongside immigrants from all over the world. And thanks to them, we've become more Brazilian and at the same time, just a little bit more Japanese. Most people have no idea, but in Sao Paulo, we love the culture, traditions, the food, the cartoons. If it's Japanese, it's cool. So I'm ready to cross the earth to know a bit more about this incredible country. Are you? I am so ready for Japan. So let's go. Let's go. picked our luggage and it was a bit too late for us to get portable Wi-Fi so I've been looking for it everywhere it's either sold out or the stores are closed so anyway I guess I'm gonna have to do it tomorrow we're pretty hungry very very tired after 30 hours of flying but hey we're in Japan Tokyo's two main airports Narita and Haneda are connected to its subway system the system is comprised of two independent yet connected networks, the Tokyo Metro and the Toei Subways, so you can get from the two airports to almost anywhere in the city. Ticket prices vary according to the stations and zones involved, so prices vary according to your destination. Please watch my videos about the city's metro system to know a bit more about it. In just over an hour, we made it from Narita to our hotel. We stayed in the eastern part of the city in a four-star hotel called East 21. Don't forget to watch my review of this hotel, it's here on Travelzilla. Well, this morning I'm gonna get me some egg slut. Yeah, baby, egg slut. Look. I'm definitely getting that. We were too tired, so we took a cab to the closest subway station, which is 5 minutes from us, by taxi, and from there we took the subway system to Asakusa. It took us 40 minutes to get there. We're going to Asakusa. Asakusa is the center of the Shitamachi or Low City, one of Tokyo's districts where an atmosphere of the past still survives. Asakusa is where kimono-clad visitors enjoy a retro experience in the city. It's one of the city's top attractions and one of my favorite stops here in Tokyo. One of the best attractions in Asakusa is Nakamizi, the shopping street that connects the main gate to the main hall of the incredible Sensoji Temple. The 250 meter street is lined with a number of souvenir shops and food joints. Here you can enjoy what the Japanese call tabearuki, which means walk and eat.
Hi, my name is Rodrigo and today I'm here in Asakusa, Tokyo. Come with me, I'm gonna show you around. Come on. Here in Nakamizi, we didn't eat so much because we just had a big breakfast back at the hotel, but the food we had here was really good. We stopped at this patisserie called Funawa for ice cream, but they also serve stuffed pudding for 410 yen, potato doreaki for 237 yen, and green tea ice cream for 350 yen per cone. And their funazuki cost 220 yen. It's a sweet potato in doreaki. It's delicious. Welcome to Kiki. Nakamizi is one of the oldest shopping streets here in Japan. Between the years of 1688 and 1735 when Shogun Tokugawa established the Edo Shogunate, the neighbors of Sensoji Temple were given the right to open shops to cater to visitors in the surroundings of the temple itself, of course. This is how Nakamizi is started to take shape. Today, the street has 89 shops in total and it's 250 meters of length. Sensoji was founded in 645 AD as a place of worship for a statue of Canon that was found by two brothers in the Sumida River in the year 628 AD, which makes of it Tokyo's oldest temple. In the year 645 AD, Hajino Nakamoto, the chief of the village, donated his own house and turned it into the original building of this current complex. Some people say that some of the best things in life are for free, right? Well, this is one of them. Enjoy! Sensoji Temple can be visited completely free of charge throughout the year. It opens all year long as I just told you and the main hall opens daily from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. The temple is really beautiful and peaceful despite the crowds. Don't visit this place in a hurry. Take your time, pray and enjoy.
Now that we've been blessed with such an incredible place, let's check out what this city looks like from its highest tower, the Tokyo Sky Tree. I'm gonna walk there. Please join me. Let's go. The distance between the two sites is of 1.5 kilometers, which is only a 20 minute walk, by the way. So why not? Let's check it out. If you find one of these vending machines along the way, take advantage of it. It was hot. We did. The beverage prices here range from 120 to 170 yen. Which means between 1 and 1.50 euros or US dollars for a drink. The Tokyo Sky Tree is a broadcasting and observation deck in Sumida. He became the tallest structure in Japan in 2010 when it reached its full length of 634 meters or 2,080 feet, making it the world's tallest tower and the world's second tallest structure after the Burj Khalifa in Dubai at the time. So we're trying to find the pathway to the Tokyo Sky Tree, and it's amazing. Check this out. Abandoned? No. Yeah, whatever. So we're gonna get to the Tokyo Sky Tree and pay a lot of money to go up and show you. So stay there, stay tuned for the Tokyo Sky Tree. Que ela virou. Nossa, nossa, ficou a mão aqui. Vamos vai. Admission tickets vary according to the time of the year, the day of the week, the floor you're going to visit, and your age. A regular Sky Tree combo ticket for both observation decks go for 3,100 yen on weekdays, which is 26 euros or 28.25 US dollars per person, but the variants are so great I've posted the link in description so that you can check the type of ticket that suits you best. The tower is 634 meters tall, but our first stop, the Tembo deck, sits at 340 meters above the ground. There you'll find the Tembo Galleria ticket counter, the Sky Tree Cafe, the Tembo deck floor, restaurants and shops. The views are incredible and the city is bigger than any other I've ever seen. So here you'll be able to have a 360 degree view of Tokyo at 340 to 350 meters above the ground have professional pictures taken of you and your family and friends, buy souvenirs, so on and so forth. cost of $10 and it's so worth it because it's way less crowded. For a bit more money you can visit the Tokyo Sky Tree Tembo Galleria. There you'll find art exhibits and the Sorakata Point which offers a 360 view of Tokyo 450 meters above the ground which is astounding. The views are really incredible. There you'll be able to put the city's main attractions into perspective, get to know the grounds and have a better sense of direction in this enormous city. Here one thing becomes very clear. This is the world's biggest city indeed. Once you go back down there is a shopping center with some really good souvenir shops and some great toy stores. Let's check out some of the prices shall we?
Here you'll also find famous local shops such as the NHK Character Shop where you'll be able to find items of the most famous characters of the NHK channel from Japan. Here you can buy plush toys, clothing, magnets, mugs, pajamas for kids, anything with your favorite NHK characters in it. Enjoy! I am so tired. Tired, tired, tired. We were both starving, so we decided to eat at the Tokyo Sky Tree Complex itself, but in the shopping center on the ground floor in a place called Tokyo Fried Noodles, and the dishes cost between 600 and 900 yen a piece, or between 5 to 8 euros, 5.5 to 8.5 US dollars a dish. So we were both very curious to say the least. The Tokyo Fried Noodles staff was very friendly indeed and patient with us as well. They explained what the specials were, the prices, so on and so forth. They were really nice people. So both dishes were delicious. We both had fried noodles, of course. We enjoyed our meal and ate everything served to us. No leftovers. The food was really, really good. So the food was really, really good. We spent about 12 US dollars or 11 euros each paid and we were very ready to grab coffee and dessert when we came across a branch of the Pronto Cafe, a local chain here at the complex itself. Check this out. Pronto has the most amazing egg custard dessert. It reminds me a lot of certain Portuguese pastries. It's called brulee in a baunconchain. It's a creme brulee inside that famous baunconchain pastry from Eastern Europe. It's awesome and costs 360 yen by itself or 530 yen in a combo. I've ordered a brulee and a matcha latte, which is one of my favorite drinks, and the set cost me 530 yen. Not bad at all. Okay guys, now I'm ready to go to our next attraction. Let's go! Hi guys, now we're at a neighborhood called Akihabara. Akihabara, also called Akiba after a former local shrine, is a district in central Tokyo famous for its many electronic shops. This area is considered the center of otaku culture in Japan, which means that many shops dedicated to manga and anime culture are located here. On Sundays, Chuodori, its main street, is closed to car traffic from 1 pm to 5 or 6 pm, depending on the time of the year. Here you'll find Pokemon shops, arcades, Sega, huge electronic stores such as Big Camera and the world famous Yodobashi store. In recent years, dozens of shops specialized in otaku culture, meaning manga, anime culture, retro video games, figurines, card games, so on and so forth, have opened here. <laughs> So, in addition to shops, various animation-related establishments have become popular in the area, such as the maid cafes, where waitresses dress and act as such, and the manga cafes as well. Now let's visit a cafe themed after Gundam. It's called Gundam Cafe, and it's being themed after the famous anime series of the same name. The cafe serves Gundam-themed dishes and is decorated with art and themes from the series.
As you can see on the menu, all dishes have been inspired by this series. Both of our drinks were really, really tasty, but I was ready to have some ice cream, so let's go. So orange. Is it good? Very good. So we've ordered Unicorn versus Banshee Ice to share, of course, and it costs us 605 yen with tax included, or 5.1 euros. 5.5 US dollars. The dessert consists of vanilla ice cream with kiwi sauce and black sesame ice cream with mango sauce. It's quite a mix, but it tasted really, really good. Adorei o sorvete. The ice cream is pretty good. So after our juice and ice cream, we were ready to keep exploring Akihabara. Let's go! So who is Cheryl Murakami after all? She's a Japanese-American dancer and choreographer who's worked with some of the world's biggest pop stars. She's got a VMA for the choreography of Beyoncé's Who Run The World Girls and we've known each other for over 20 years. So when our friend Michiko told me she was in town, I decided to surprise her. I didn't film that, but check her out. I love you Cheryl, you're amazing. Shibuya is a major commercial and business center in Tokyo. It houses the two busiest railway stations in the world, Shinjuku and Shibuya stations. It's a huge commercial area with an incredible variety of shops from international and national brands alike. Historically, Shibuya was the site of a castle that belonged to the Shibuya family in the 11th century. It's a place you must visit here in Tokyo. Let's check it out. Here I am at Shibuya Crossing. So let's cross it, right?
Meet Tokyo's most famous dog, Hachiko. This Akira dog came to Shibuya Station every day to meet his master, a professor returning from work. After the professor died in 1925, Hachiko kept coming here to wait for him every day for nearly a decade after his death. What an awesome story. This is a place you must come, you must visit here in Tokyo. From Hachiko, we decided to pay a visit to the Disney Store to buy tickets for the Tokyo Disney Sea. Please watch both videos I made at the Tokyo Disney Sea, a park guide and a shopping guide. Both videos are here on Travelzilla. Here we are at the Tokyo Disney Store. Let's go inside. Come along. The store is awesome, the products are top-notch and the lines to buy tickets are quite long. Check out some of the scenes from the incredible Tokyo Disney Sea vlog. Enjoy! Harajuku is Tokyo's most extravagant neighborhood due to the people that spend time in the area. Fashionistas, artists, stylists, people in cosplay, fashion industry people and daring young people from all over Japan and the world. Our journey starts here at the iconic entrance to the neighborhood's Tokyo Plaza, a local shopping center. Let's check it out. Well, malls tend to look the same all over the world, so let me introduce you to one of my favorite shopping streets in Japan, Omotesando Street. Omotesando Street is a beautiful tree-lined shopping street that goes from Meiji Shrine all the way to Aoyama Street. The street features a multitude of flagship stores, cafes and international brands. It's one of my favorite places to go in Tokyo for sure. Omotesando Street can get a bit crowded, so let's explore the neighborhood's smaller roads and alleyways, shall we? Let's go! Another street you can't miss here in Harajuku is Takeshita Street. Takeshita is a pedestrian street lined with fashion boutiques, cafes and restaurants. Let's take a walk. Here in Harajuku, a store we love is called the B-Side Label, which specializes in stickers designed by artists who express themselves through their individual pop art styles. There are several branches in both Tokyo and Osaka. Let's check it out.
Back at the Tokyo Plaza and having walked all over Harajuku, we decided to look for a place to eat. We found a cafe called Hans Cafe inside a store called Hans B. Chicken rice and veggies cost 1100 yen or 9.25 euros or 10 US dollars. Mmm, yummy! So guys, now we're gonna go to Meiji Shrine here in Tokyo. Hi guys, so now we're here at Meiji Shrine and I'm gonna show it to you. It's right next to Harajuku and right next, right next to Omote Sando Avenue, okay? So check out that incredible gate right behind me. Awesome, right? So let's check it out. Come on. Meiji Shrine, located in Shibuya, is dedicated to the deified spirits of Emperor Meiji and his wife, Emperor Shoken. The shrine doesn't have the Emperor's grave though, for it's located near the city of Kyoto. How cool is this? So cool, isn't it? Meiji Shrine is located in a forest that covers an area of 70 hectares in the heart of Tokyo. It consists of 120,000 trees of 365 different species. The construction of the shrine began after the death of Emperor Meiji. The work started in 1915. The buildings were built in the Nagari Zukuri style, using Japanese cypress and copper. The original building was destroyed during World War II and they rebuilt in 1958. Let's go for a walk, come along. Welcome to Meiji Shrine. On New Year's Eve, the Japanese often visit a Shinto shrine to prepare for the worship of the New Year called Hatsumode. Meiji Shrine is the most popular site in Japan for Hatsumode. The shrine is adjacent to Yoyoji Park. It opens at sunrise and closes at sunset. Attention everyone, when you take a taxi in Japan, place your money on top of the given tray and pick up any change from the tray as well, not directly from the driver. When you leave, keep in mind that taxi doors close automatically, there is no need to close them, okay? Check this out. The Ghibli Museum is the animation and art museum of one of Japan's most famous animation studios, Ghibli Studios. Located in Mitaka, just outside of central Tokyo, the museum is a must-see for the fans of the films. The buildings were designed in the same style of the studio's animated pictures, and many characters are present, such as the robot from the film Castle in the Sky, 
one of the studio's most iconic productions. Hi guys, well, so this is the Ghibli Museum. Uh, please make sure that you make reservations online for you to get here because uh, they don't sell tickets right here. You need to reserve them online, okay? If you show up here without tickets, they won't let you in. And for the entire month of July, tickets were completely sold out. So make sure that uh, you have your tickets or you get your tickets way in advance, okay? That's it. The Ghibli Museum is easily accessible by subway, taxi, or by bus. We came by taxi, but we're taking the bus back into central Tokyo. It's quite easy. Now, let's go to Shinjuku. Shinjuku is the name of a very interesting area within Tokyo. It's a major commercial and administrative center. It houses part of the world's busiest train station and also the Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building. The area that surrounds Shinjuku Station is home to many company headquarters, including Epson, Subaru, Nissin Foods, so on and so forth. Let's check out the Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building. Let's go! Here at the Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building, you'll find two observation decks, each located on the 45th floor of its respective tower. The entrance is free of charge. All you have to do is find one of the elevators and make your way all the way to the top floor of one of the two towers. Maybe go to both. The views are breathtaking. Check this out. in the streets of Shinjuku and I'm gonna eat me some food before I record a song. Ginza is one of the coolest and most upscale areas of Tokyo. It has some of the best shops in Japan, international brands, department stores, boutiques, cafes, and restaurants to die for. Not to mention two of the world's most expensive streets, Chuodori and Harumidori. Ginza was built upon a swamp filled in the 16th century. The name Ginza means silver mint and was given because the area was the site of a silver coin mint in the Edo period from the 1600s to the 1800s. The Kabukiza Theater is in the area. It's the best place in the city to watch the traditional kabuki, which is a classic Japanese theater dance drama. 
In front of the Kabukiza Theater, I met with my friend Michiko, a Tokyo native I first met when we both lived in New York City in the 90s, but we hadn't seen each other in 17 years. Michiko gave us a tour of the area. She took us to this incredible mall called Ginza 6. It's Ginza's largest shopping complex. It's mainly devoted to cosmetics, interior design, there's a theater and a really cool bookstore as well. Thanks, Michiko. Then we walked around some of the smaller roads such as the restaurant line Ginza Quarter Street and many other streets. Michiko and I had a lot to talk about since we used to see each other a lot back in New York City. Yet we haven't seen each other in 17 years. Time flies. Hello, Michiko, Michiko. Hi. Michiko in the house, yeah. Michiko in the house, yep. Yep. <laughs> After a tour of the neighborhood and a long chat, we decided not to go to a fancy sushi place as previously thought, but to a more local, traditional Japanese seafood joint, so she took us to Uomaru. I loved the experience, it was very different, very local and very roots. <laughs> so Michiko, what's this place called? Omaru. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Hello. In the middle of one of Tokyo's most expensive areas, I never expected to find little alleyways in an atmosphere from a different Japan, from a time long gone, and that tourists aren't really familiar with, you know what I mean? It's a very special moment, right? So welcome to Japan! Welcome to Japan! So happy to see you guys! Come by! Ever. And now some real sushi in Japan. 
and I'm so freaking excited. We had sushi, sashimi, ebishumai, crabs, and a few other dishes I don't remember the names of, and it was so good, so tasty. I'm used to Japanese food. In Sao Paulo, where I'm from, there are thousands of sushi restaurants, and I truly enjoyed this one. Not to mention the ginger ale, it was amazing. After dinner, we walked around many incredible side streets filled with little restaurants. It was amazing. Then Michiko took us to the Tokyo International Forum, which is a multi-purpose exhibition center in Tokyo, which houses some pretty important national and international events in the city. The forum was built on the site of the old city hall. It's a pretty amazing building. Check this out. From there, we headed to the world-famous Tokyo Station, home to some pretty important lines such as the JR Line and the famous Shinkansen train, not to mention the Tokyo Metro. The station is beautiful, it was built in 1914 and it's really well preserved. And before I knew it, it was time to say goodbye to my friend Michiko. Bye old friend! After Michiko left us, we went back to Ginza's most expensive streets to check out the window displays at night. Check this out, it's incredible! The Tokyo Imperial Palace is the primary residence of the Emperor of Japan. It's a large park-like area. The buildings include the main palace, the private residences of the Imperial family, an archive, museums and administrative offices. 
The current building is built on the site of the old Edo Castle and it's located in the city center, surrounded by a park and modern buildings all around. In 1868, when the emperor left Kyoto, he moved here and called it Tokei Castle or Tokejo. That's where the name of the city comes from. Much of the previous buildings were built using wooden structures that were replaced or destroyed along the years by fires, earthquakes, wars, so on and so forth. The inner grounds of the palace are generally not open to the public. Only on January 2nd, New Year's greeting, and on February 23rd, the Emperor's birthday. Visitors are able to enter the inner palace and see the members of the imperial family who appear on a balcony. Guided tours take place all year round, but no buildings are entered. Propongi is a district of Minato in Tokyo, famous for the F1 Propongi Hills development area and very popular nightclub scene. It's a very busy business and commercial center crowded with corporate offices and stores. The name Propongi was given to this area in 1660 and it literally means six trees. Six very old and large Zelkova trees, that is. This very large building behind the overpass is the Mori Tower, one of the tallest in the city. 238 meters and 54 floors tall. The Tokyo Tower is a communications and observation tower in Minato. It is 332.9 meters or 1,092 feet tall, and it's the second tallest structure in all of Japan after the Tokyo Sky Tree. The tower was originally built in 1958. The tower has two observatories. The tower broadcasts signals for Japanese media outlets such as NHK, TBS, and Fuji TV. The tower's two main sources of income are leasing and tourism. The tower is open to visitors every day from 9 a.m. to 10.45 p.m. Adults pay 1,200 yen or 10 euros, 11 US dollars for the main deck and 2,800 yen for both decks if you buy it online, of course, and then 3,000 if you buy the ticket counter. Hey guys, there's so much more to Tokyo than whatever you've seen here. Pay a visit to the city, it's amazing! And don't forget to drop a like, leave a comment, share and subscribe. See you in my next videos! Arigatou gozaimasu! Sayonara! Bye bye!